what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Tom Vecchio of FanDuel, who's here to break down the top value plays on the board here in Week 10. What's going on, Tom? I'm doing good. Masters started today. We've got a weekend coming up with football. Let's jump in. Let's do it. And let's begin in Cleveland, where it, we may see one running back returning and another one out, specifically with the Houston Texans, where David Johnson is unlikely to play this weekend due to a concussion which means we got the Duke Johnson revenge game all lined up. Duke is priced at $5,800 for Houston. He saw the most carries this past weekend, as he's seen, I believe, since his rookie year in Cleveland. This whole narrative sets up for a big game from Duke Johnson. Yeah, David Johnson, he didn't practice on Wednesday dealing with his concussion. As you said, very unlikely to play. Uh, Duke Johnson, he came in last week, saw 20 total touches after uh, David Johnson has left the game. Uh, we're dealing with a solid over under here, 52 and a half. We have a three-point spread. I think we're looking at a bit of a shootout here. Uh, the Browns are allowing 20.5 FanDuel points per game to opposing running backs. The price tag is right, 5,800. The game environment is right. We know the opportunity will be there. And we have a revenge narrative on top of it. I'm buying into Duke Johnson this week. Absolutely. You get the narrative. You get the injury to David Johnson. Duke Johnson should be in a really, really nice spot here this week for Houston, uh, which is showing they're going to rely on one back. And that back this weekend is the Duke. Over to Miami next, where Jakeem Grant is your next top value play here on the board at the wide receiver spot. He's priced at $4,600. And this is obviously notable because there is no Preston Williams this weekend. Devontae Parker will step up. But who's going to be the other player to step up for this Dolphins team? You heard Matt Collins. He's going to touchdown um, over this past week. People have talked about Antonio Callaway coming off suspension. But you're going with Jakeem Grant, priced at $4,600. Why Grant over some of the other options with the Dolphins? As you said, it's going to be an interesting week for the Dolphins wide receivers. Preston Williams going to on uh, going to IR. That leaves Devontae Parker, Mac Hollins, and Jakeem Grant as the main three wide receivers. Mac Hollins only saw one target last week, while Grant had five. He also played on 48% of the snaps. Now the snaps aren't super high, but we know that Preston Williams did play in a bit of that game against the Cardinals, so we can expect the snaps to rise. The game environment, I think, is pretty solid against the Chargers. They're allowing 27.7 fan points per game to opposing wide receivers. That's around league average, but at $4,600, he's one of the cheapest pure starters that we could be seeing. So I like the price tag. We know that the Dolphins are showing that they have trust in Tua to throw the ball a little bit more. $4,600 isn't bad for a starting wide receiver. We don't know what exactly the role will be for Jakeem Grant, but this week, taking a shot under 5K at a starting receiver is probably worth it. $4,600 for Grant for the Dolphins here. We'll see if Tua could lock on to Grant as a favorite target on Sunday. One more position to get to, and it's the tight end spot. Price at 4500 this week is Gerald Everett. Everett's had a nice season, and maybe the season that many thought Tyler Higby would have. The Rams are coming off a bye week here. Why do you think Everett is a good start with Higby seemingly healthy, a bunch of others, obviously other tight ends uh, on the board and available? I know he's priced under 5 k Why Gerald Everett this week? So this one's a little bit interesting, and you know, I, I know getting exposure to the Seahawks-Rams game is going to be a very popular option for plenty of people going to Cup and Woods and Lockett and Metcalf, but you want to differentiate a little bit while still getting exposure. Now, in the last three games that they have both played, this is Tyler Higby and Gerald Everett. We know that Tyler Higby missed the game against Chicago, so we don't want to factor that in for Everett. But in the last three games that they both played, we have 60 routes ran for Tyler Higby, 52 for Everett. He's not that far behind. And in those same three games, we have Everett seeing more targets and more receptions. So while he's the quote-unquote backup, it's not like Higby is, you know, Travis Kelsey over here where he's dominating the snaps, dominating all the targets. He's just the starter by name where Everett is actually being more productive in less playing time. So I love the price tag at $4,500. I love getting exposure to this game that has a 55 over under in a different way and hopefully getting someone that's just not as popular. Gerald Everett is splitting time with Tyler Higby. It's not like a, a one and a backup situation. It's it's kind of a split. And Sean McVay has found ways to get Gerald Everett involved. Priced it under $5,000. Everett's as good a shot in any at the tight end spot here this weekend. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel Hurry Up. Tom, we appreciate the time. Good luck this weekend. Good luck to you. Talk to you next week. Absolutely. We wrap up our DFS coverage tomorrow as Jim Sonis will join me as we take a look at the top stacks on the board here for Week 10. For Tom Vecchio, I'm Greg Sussman. Thanks so much for watching. Enjoy Thursday Night Football tonight, and we'll see you back here tomorrow for another edition of the FanDuel Hurry Up.